www.cat5.tv slash 004, I think is where we were. There we are. We make great things happen. <laughs> so what we're going to do, next step. And again, you can get these files off cat5.tv slash webdev. And also you can get uh, a really great deal on website hosting. If you want to get uh, web hosting, you can go to our website cat5.tv slash webdev. You'll see the coupon up at the top for a free domain, a year of hosting, and it's only 70 bucks US. It's so a really great deal. Out. Really great deal. Yeah. So looking at what, uh, you know, what we're doing with our website, we've got that uh, we make great things happen. And what I want to do is I want to move that in because if you look at the mock-up, see it's not actually touching the edge of the area here with the wood grain. On our site though, it is. Okay, so we're going to add some padding to that area. First of all, let's see what that area looks like. We're going to go into our style here. Header left, I believe is where we left off. I made that little comment there. And that's how you comment in CSS, by the way, if you like. So I'm going to go border. You remember how I do this? Solid one pix red. And all that does is it just throws a little bit of a border around this particular element in my file so that um, I can see where that element falls. OK. What I'm going to do, though, I'm going to make 005, just so we don't lose what we did last week. So go into uh, 005 with me on demo.cat5.tv. <clears throat> okay, so you'll see that that border actually extends the entire area here. So what we want to do is we don't want it to actually fill that whole area. We're going to bring up our mock-up here and let's determine about how wide we want that area to be. So I'm using my rectangular marquee. And I'm just going to highlight to the right edge so it's almost touching the, uh, the photo there. And I can just go edit, copy, visible, edit, paste as new image. And that shows me up here now with that new image that is 534 pixels wide. I'm going to round up to 535. So in my CSS, I'm going to grab that area here header left. I'm going to go width colon 535 pix. Pix is for pixels. That's the measurement unit that we're using. In HTML you could have just had 535 but in CSS we have to have the px in order to specify what measurement we're actually using. I'm going to upload my CSS file and refresh and you'll see that that red border is now only to there. Okay, so now we can do a couple of different things. First of all, let's look at our mock-up. It looks like, Krista, we could, uh, we could probably just center the text, yeah? I think so. We could center it within that div, and then that's going to actually put it pretty much exactly where you want it to be. We've got that measurement, and if we center it in there, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to be where we want it to be. So in our CSS, for that particular element that's header left, let's do this. Text align, colon center. And it's going to take any text that's within that header left div and it's going to place it in the center of that div. Refresh. And there we go. Okay. So next thing is we need to move it down because it's up too high for the way that our mock-up is designed. Now you've got it pretty much vertically centered as well. What we can do so we can say, okay, we want it to be, everything's in measurements, right? So I could just copy that. And I'm, again, I'm just using that to measure. I'm not actually needing to copy something. I just want to know how much space is that. That's 51 pixels high. So if I say I want to move that down 50 pixels, then that's fine. So there's a couple of ways I can do that. I could use relative positioning to move this down. Don't necessarily want to do that. I could pad the inner part of the div to move down the text. I could add a margin to the outside of the div to move the entire div down. Any one of those things is going to work. So let's try, for example, padding. Okay. What I can do is I can go padding top. And how, how many pixels did I say that was? 51. 51. So let's just do 50. You can be exact if you want to do the one pixel, but for me, I prefer to have nice clean numbers. Okay, so now I've padded the top. So what I've done, 
But remember, padding happens on the inside of the div, so you see the border is in the same place, right? But this has been moved down, and there's a pad of 50 pixels. Now, alternatively, just to show you, because I'd like you to learn this, what the differences are here, I'm going to change that to uh, margin top. And remember, margins occur on the outside of the div. So watch the difference. The positioning is going to be the same. So the, aft, you know, the, the end effect is really the same thing. But what happens here when I refresh? Oh, in this particular case, it's not because of the surrounding wrapper. So in this case, I am going to need to use a padding top because margin top doesn't even do anything for me. What a margin top does differently, in, and it depends on what, what, the, what this uh, header left is contained within. Header left is contained within header, and so header also controls uh, header left's positioning and everything like that. So in, in some cases, a margin will actually bump things from the outside. A padding will, as you saw there, add padding to the inside. So that works just fine for what we're doing tonight. So what we'll do is leave that padding top as 50 pixels, remove our border, and our text positioning is going to be exactly where we want it to be. Uploading again just style.css because we're not actually changing anything in our HT, our PHP file. Okay, so now the positioning there is pretty good. Okay. All right, so I want to get a little bit further in the header. See if we can get some positioning done with our actual graphic as well. That's the uh, the Polaroid shot. You remember us working on that. So here we are in images. And again, you can download all these files at cat5.tv slash webdev. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I'm just going to slap that in. You know, I'm just going to grab that file and I'm going to slap it into index.php just so that we can see exactly what's going to happen. Let's put it within our div. And logically, you're going to say, well, I want this to be to the right of make great things happen, right? So you're going to go, we remember how to do this, image img space src for source equals quote the location of the file that's relative to your index.php so that to me is I can do that dot slash images slash Polaroid or I could just do that either one is correct okay so that's calling that image and now if I close off that tag like that make it XML compliant with a slash because this is the end of the image tag. There's nothing further that happens for this tag, so I'm closing it off. Okay, now I can save that and upload index.php. Now if I refresh 005, you'll see that even though in my mind I would have thought, well, putting it to the right of that div should have put it over to the right, it's actually putting it after. And that, if you, do you remember what the cause is of that? Or do you, do you remember what we can do to fix it? Is that a float yes. left issue? A float. <laughs> Fantastic. Everybody at home answered the same thing. It's a float. At the same time. It's a float. Yes. <laughs> well done. Okay, so there's a couple of things, and sometimes these things take experimentation. So the first thing I would try is I would add a float left to my header left. Okay? And then upload my style.css. Now if I look at my file, I'm going to see what kind of effect that has. And it did do exactly what I wanted it to do. So I'm not actually having to specify float right for the other element, pardon me, because it's, uh, it's already floating right because it floats to the right of whatever the left element is. So we are golden there. Let's look back at our mock-up. Positioning looks, uh, looks about right. Yeah? Yeah, it looks good. Looks pretty good. Okay, so now this is where things get really tricky because now we've got an element on top of an element on top of an element and now it's getting into the point where it's almost like layers in Photoshop or layers in the GIMP and we're actually able to put these layers together on the web and it saves so much space because you remember how much space we were able to save by breaking up this particular image. We took that image that was like over 100K <laughs> and took it down to like 40 or something like that. It was ridiculous. 
So it's definitely worth our time to do this. So let's see what we can actually do here. I'm going to go into images. There's the photo that we want to slap into our um, wrapper kind of thing for the Polaroid. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a new div and it's going to have the dimensions of this Polaroid ping. So I'm going to view that Polaroid ping. Okay? And get my dimensions, which are 372 by 393. So I'm going to have to make a note of that because I know I'll forget. So let's create the ID first. So an ID, again, we're going to go pound, and let's call this Polaroid. Okay? And we're going to go width colon, and then what did we say the width was? It is. Oh, where to go? There we go. 372 picks. 372 picks. Height, colon. 393 picks. Okay, just like that. All right, so now we have that particular div. So no matter what we do, now let's do something here. Let's go background. Zero, zero, zero. I'm going to just give it a black background so that when we place that div with that ID, we can see exactly where it's going to land. So, div ID equals ah, Polaroid. All right. Let's cop I'm going to cut that image to my clipboard, or I can just, you know, I'll paste it after the site just to have it there. And now if I add a non breaking space and then close my div, because we always close what we open. Okay. All right, so that's what it looks like at this point. Let's upload those two files that are affected there. That's index.php and style.css. And you'll see now we have this div, which is the same dimensions as that image but it's just a black box. So what we want to do is we want to position that div properly because that div is going to become our wrapping div for the Polaroid so that we can keep all of the Polaroid elements within that div. Okay, you're gonna, you, you'll understand what the purpose in that is because really it's, it's going to be the frame for that element and then we're going to be able to put anything within that frame and it's not going to fall outside of it. So it makes positioning a lot simpler. So with Polaroid, let's try float colon right. And we might have to do something that's going to look kind of strange. Let's see if this takes just as is. There we go. No, that looks pretty good. Okay. So we're good. So now let's take this. Now that image that we have in our, at the bottom of our file right now, just as a placeholder. I'm going to do something a little different here. What we're going to do is we're not going to place it as an image. We're going to instead just grab that reference tag, so just the location of the image. I'm copying that to my clipboard, and then I'm going to delete this line because I don't need it. I'm going to go back to my CSS file. After saving index, I'm going to go to my Polaroid, and where it says background is black, I'm going to instead go background URL, and then paste in that reference. Images, Polaroid, underscore bg dot ping. Now what I need to do is go no dash repeat. Now of course the dimensions are exact so it's not going to repeat anyways but it's proper form to include the no repeat so that if for some strange reason something happens where it's going to actually end up looping the image you just don't want that to happen. So let's open our image, uh, upload our images, our files, pardon me, index and style. And if we refresh You'll see that that image is now there again, but it's, in fact, now it's not an image, it's a background image. See, there it is. Okay? So we can put anything we like on top of that. And because it's within a div container called Polaroid, we can also, we could just wrap anything we want in that div. So I could put text here. And if I upload that, Now all of a sudden, now it's, it's going to touch the edges because we haven't added any padding or anything like that. But within that element, 
there is text. If I color that black, just to kind of learn how this works. You tell me if, if I'm getting redundant, but I, I want this to be, I, I like to learn the actual concepts behind, you know, how come this is working, how come this is doing it this way. So all I've done is I've colored it black and I've added some padding there. Just to show you that now, if I upload the right file, of course, if I saved it. Oh, didn't upload the right file. Style.css. Sorry, gang. Are you laughing with me or at me? Oh, a little of both. Yeah, a little of both. Yeah, all right. What makes you feel better? I can accept that. Nothing makes me feel better. Ah, I'm both. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Essentially, though, we can see that what I've done there is put hello world within that. Also change some other things, so. All right. So here's where I'm going to fix my text size there. Reset, control zero. Here's something that takes some experimentation but is kind of interesting. I'm going to take this float, floating div, the Polaroid, and I'm going to change the order. I'm going to actually put it before the one that's floating left. This is a cool trick for search engine optimization. You'll see what that's done there. Now, I'm, what's happening here is that I've got two elements that are taking up the same amount, the, the same space. And so it's saying, okay, this one's too wide to have this one within the header element. Because remember, header has a specified width. So we need to make these elements a little bit narrow, narrower so that they'll fit side by side. But what I'm showing you there is that the element hello world here can occur in the in the code before the element which is actually showing first if this was up here which it can be if we just change the width a little bit um, so the search engines see it as the priority text even though it's occurring after in the visual representation of the site so what we'll often do is we'll for example create a menu system that the the menu could be on the, let's say the menu was the element that you want the search engines to pick up on. So we could put it on the right hand side of the site and yet in the code it's at the very very top of the code because floats and positions allow it to be wherever we want it to be in the code. It's no longer linear as HTML was where you had to code it in the order in which it was to display. Uh, it's not like a table where you know it has to be the next TD because you can control it using floats. So very sneaky. Very, very sneaky. It could be very cool. Probably beyond the scope of tonight. But you can understand how that can be really helpful and awesome. All right, let's see where things are at here. Okay. There we go. So if I remove the padding, then of course the text goes back to normal and hello world is up here. And I can position within that. So what I want to do is I want to actually create a div that is within this image, okay, so this here, and we're going to place the Polaroid there, and that's going to take us to the next step. It, it seems like it takes a bit of time to get through this, this header end of things. I think largely that's because we're learning, you know, what do floats do, how do we position elements, and how do we uh, change our text. Once we get through this, which is going to happen next week, um, then we're going to be just rocking out the body of the, the website itself uh, because of the fact that uh, really, as we learn, we don't need to spend as much time on the, the mundane details. Uh, but I do want you to learn these things, and I, I think it's, uh, I think it's uh, been cool for a lot of people to learn this stuff. So pop me an email live at category5.tv and uh, let me know if you have any questions. And certainly if you have a viewer testimonial, I'd invite you to go over to category5.tv and click on Interact and submit a testimonial.